Eamon wasn't at Ostagar, he still has all his men. And he was Kaelin's uncle. I know him. He's a good man, respected in the Landsmeet. Of course, we could go to Redcliffe and appeal to him for help. So you said this Arl Eamon raised you? I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arl Eamon wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. Are you sure he isn't your father? Yes, I'm quite sure. At any rate, I don't look anything like him. You'll see for yourself. So... you're female? I had no idea. I did not think it needed to be said. It has never told me what gender it is, has it? I am female. Good for it. I am sure that to other creatures as soft and weak as itself, that would be perfectly obvious. The truth is that whatever gender I was is irrelevant now. I am a golem. I have no gender. It will not become an issue. I think it's great. Ah, yes. Female bonding and all that. Ra. Now, let us crush something soft and watch it fountain blood. That is a girlish thing to want to do, yes? Something on your mind? What was it like to be a Grey Warden, with all the others? I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. No, I'd like to hear about them. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfels. What was his name? Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. It sounds like you had a lot of fun. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow, it doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... Until... I'm sorry, this must be hard for you. Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by, nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his that I could take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. You have your memories of him? I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? My hair? Thank you. It's very nice, and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orle. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else, and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Oh, poor birds. Yes, I don't envy them. She never washed her hair. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. Well... We are friends, aren't we? Yes, very much so. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. You are a treasured friend, Leliana. Thank you. I am honored that you feel that way. Speak, then. Mages aren't as dangerous as you say. Clearly your Chantry agrees. Well, not all mages turn to blood magic. My people have a tale. An Ashkari walked among the fields once, observing the laborers at work. Flax bloomed all around him, the color of still water. The air rippled like a curtain. 
As he stopped to examine a blossom, a bee stung him on the hand. The Ashkari turned to a laborer for aid and noticed for the first time the heavy gloves and coat she wore. As she tended to him, the Ashkari asked them why she was dressed so in such stifling heat. To avoid your fate, she replied. But there are many thousands of bees here, the Ashkari said to her, and only one stung me. Surely your caution is unwarranted. The stinger is always a surprise, agreed the laborer. But so is the bee that simply passes one by. It's beyond caution, though. Look around you. Ask the dead who lie here what the cost of one mage's failure is. Something you need? I'm sure either my boy or I can help you out. Have you heard any rumors? Nobody seems to know where Oral Eamon is in all this business. If he were here, he could put a stop to all this talk of civil war for sure. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. How did you become a shape-changer? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Your mother has been doing this for a long time, then? Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me, tis true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human, I am under no illusions to the contrary. What do other animals think of you when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, 
This allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. I've never heard of magic like that before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded lore from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could, but as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. That's good. Such traditions need to be preserved. I am surprised you think so. Still, it is a pleasant thing to hear. Can anyone become a shape-changer? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. That's all I wanted to ask. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? I think your abilities sound quite useful. A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. But enough of such talk, let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Here I am. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? <gasps> and why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? You've never killed an innocent. Now there is an interesting word, innocent. How many men do you know who can claim to be truly innocent? But if you're talking generalities, such as children and relatives and bystanders and such, never on purpose, but it happens. It's unfortunate, but death comes to us all. If not me, then some wasting disease, or a fall down the stairs, or at the hands of a darkspawn. It's all relative in the end. That sounds like an excuse. Death happens, as we like to say. And when I get paid for it, death happens more often. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. I take no pleasure in killing. It is not pleasure, per se. Nothing sexual. It is more a sense of satisfaction, a feeling of power. Does that make sense? No matter. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Why not? You can do whatever you like. Whereas I am content merely doing what I happen to be good at. It's a talent that not many come by, honestly. I don't see why I need not pursue it. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. You. You have a lot of nerve coming here. By that alcohol smell, I'm guessing you're drunk. You're drunk? <laughs> Take that, you sodding... Uh, sodding... poetess. Poetess? You came and, and stole my own princess with your, your... your poetry. Ah, you think I'm Hesper. Your disguise can't fool me, woman. That's right. You keep looking at me like that. I'll just go get my pants from that sodding dog.
Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. What's on your mind? I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Caelan my half-brother, I suppose. Why did you wait to tell me this? I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaelin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. I think I understand. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got special treatment for it anyhow. At any rate, that's it. That's what I had to tell you. I thought you should know about it. You're the heir to the throne, then? Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Arl Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Caelan's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. That's not... that's not really what you think, is it? Well, no. What I really think is that I was lucky enough to survive with you. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road. Though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? What do you mean? Is there a problem? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? Well, I've heard Arlemon is sick, if that's what you mean. He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Well, that's just typical, isn't it? We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, 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 I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, Arleman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. Yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the R. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news. Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. You don't believe Loghain's lies? What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So, you are a Grey Warden as well? Is it possible we've met? You seem very familiar. You may have known my father, Ten Kuzland. Ah, yes, that's it, exactly. A pleasure to meet you indeed, though I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. What a remarkable coincidence. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil, 
things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. What evil things are you talking about? Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Kaelin dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. Of course we'll help. There are no darkspawn here and nothing to gain. It is a fool's errand. If there's a chance to rescue the Arl, we have to try. Perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. You have some of all Eamon's knights here. I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? Quest? Eamon's illness was... is... very serious. The Arlesa, out of desperation, sent the knights on a quest for a cure. I know little about this. Other than that the cure was supposed to be an ancient relic of great power. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Why are you in the Chantry with the villagers? Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. Do you need more men in here with you? We could bring some men in to stand beside me. But I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers, if possible. What exactly are these things that attack the village? I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses. Men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. All I know is these things don't fall easily. You hack them to pieces and still they come. So what happens after this battle is over? Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. I should get to work. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. I'm scared, Mother. When are the bad men coming? Soon, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I want to go home. Where's Father? Why can't we go home? I already told you. Father is outside defending the village from the bad men. We must stay here and be brave. I... I'm so scared, Father. What are we going to do? Silence, girl. Do you want the children to hear you? But night is Sorry. coming. Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Are you all right? Why are you crying? Those... Those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time. Everywhere. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. Why would he run off? Do you know? He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. Have you tried looking for your brother? I went to her house. It's by the square. He wasn't there. I searched the rest of the village too. I called and I called, but he never answered. I, I wonder if he ran off into the woods. I'm so worried. Without me, he has nobody. Don't worry. I'll look for him. You will? Thank you so much. Please find him. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I didn't think they made women Grey Wardens. Well, they do. So you say. A damn Kunari could walk up and say he was a Grey Warden. I wouldn't know the difference. That much is clear. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. That's good. The survival rate of ingrates is remarkably low. 
so I hear. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. Have faith, good man. We will defeat this evil together. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. How is morale? Morale's about what you'd expect. These men aren't soldiers. They're villagers defending their homes, and they're frightened. It would help if we had decent equipment. There weren't enough swords in Owen's shop, and the men's armor is nearly falling off. I don't think we're in any shape to fight. We'll do our best, of course, but, well, I have my doubts. I just hope I'm alive tomorrow morning. Tell me about what's happened here. Don't rightly know. We heard the Arl was sick and getting worse, but after a while we heard nothing at all. A few folks went up to the castle to see what was going on. They couldn't get in. Nobody was there, not a soul. And then those horrid creatures attacked the village. They were everywhere, people dying. It was awful. Good thing Ban Tegan was here. Do you know anything about Arl Eamon's illness? No. I know the Arlesser sent the knights out for a cure. You can ask Sir Perth about it. He was one of them. What can I do to help? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. Why does Owen refuse to talk to you? His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. Is there anything else you need? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. Tell me about Dwin. He's a trader, a dwarf. Lives near the lake. Locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. Carry on, then. Right. Let's hope we see morning. Go away. Curse you! Leave me in peace! You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Is this Owen, the blacksmith? Oh? Who is that? What do you want? I need to speak with you. I've been through enough. I, mean, I prefer not to speak through a door. Can I come in? Mm. All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? My name is Alyssa, a Grey Warden helping Ban Tegan. A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? The militia needs your help desperately. Why should I help Murdoch when he won't help me? Hmm? My girl, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead. Or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. So you intend to drink yourself to death? Why not? It's not like we're going to live past the night anyhow. Or are you going to save us? I intend to try. Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. Tell you what. If you want me to do repairs for Murdoch and his men, Promise me you'll go into the castle and find my daughter. I'll do my best. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want a promise. Promise me that you'll look for her, that you'll bring her back to me if you can. I promise you, 
I'll find her. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Is this a promise we will not keep? What's this? I said nothing to you, human. Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Go away. This isn't your home. A small human. I say burn it out. Ah, what are you doing? All right, I'll come out. Please, don't hurt me. I'll go back to the Chantry if you want. I didn't mean any harm. Your sister is looking for you, you know. I just didn't want to be at the Chantry anymore. Everyone's scared, and I want to be brave. So what were you doing in there? I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. Are you sure? Maybe I could help you. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and... Kill the bad people who took Mother. You don't think you're a bit young to fight? No. Well... Maybe the sword was too heavy for me. I guess I'm not as strong as I thought I was. You'll grow up eventually. Don't worry about it. That doesn't help us now. Caitlin says everyone's going to die tonight. Not if I'm here to help, they won't. Really? You must be very brave. I wish I was like you. You should go back to your sister. But I... Oh, all right. I guess. She'll be pretty mad at me. But I'll go. Hello? Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. I apologize. I don't mean any harm. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. What are you doing shut up in here? Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. Well, you should be out there helping defend the village. Why? When did this town ever rush to my rescue? You're a coward. You look more than competent. With you out there, they don't really need me, do they? Your chances are better out there than in here. Thanks. But I'll take my chances in here. Everyone else can run around in the open waiting to die. Can't I change your mind? Maybe. Let's hear what you've got. I'll put in a good word for you with Bantigan or the Arl. Hmm. You might just be able to pull that off. Fine. I'll throw in with the militia. For now. You better be out there, too, when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? Greetings, Grey Warden. I'm as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit I do not know quite how to address you. Is my lady sufficient? My lady would be proper. I am a Tern's daughter. Very well then, my lady. I am humbly at your service. I am Sir Perth until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now, my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, oh, well, with the Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. Tell me about what's happened here. You know about as much as I do. I returned a day before the attacks began, having heard strange rumors about the abandoned castle. 
I was the only knight to survive the first attack. Since then, I found others returning from the Alessa's quest. Until we get to the source of this evil, though, I do not think it will stop. And I don't believe we will be enough. You mentioned something about an urn. When the Isle fell sick, we were at a loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The Urn of Sacred Ashes is a legendary artifact said to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. They say the followers of Andraste smuggled her ashes out of Tevinta and hid them in Ferelden. The Urn's never been heard of since. We knights volunteered to seek it out. Few of us have returned. Many are still out there, unaware of what is happening here. Just what was the Isle sick with? We were never certain. He thirsted for water and then grew weaker and weaker. He brought in a mage, but even that did nothing. The Alessa believed he was cursed and that we needed the power of Andraste herself or he would surely perish. Why did the Alessa believe anyone could find the urn? The Al once employed a scholar, Brother Genetivi. He had proof the urn was in Ferelden, or so I was told. So the knights left the castle defenseless? Not at all. A great number of soldiers remained in Castle Redcliffe. I wonder if they perished there and were transformed into these things. The thought chills my blood. Can no one find the other knights and bring them back? Eventually, perhaps. The ones I have here were those near enough to recall within the last few days. I only returned myself because I was passing by Redcliffe and heard the news of strange attacks. Is there anything I can do to help? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. I'll see what I can do. That gladdens my heart to hear it. Is there anything else you need? No, nothing comes to mind. Carry on. As you wish, my lady. Make her watch over you. Evan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Don't worry about it. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. Let us pray. You are a stranger amongst us. Yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour. We are most grateful to you. I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a woman of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Just how safe is the Chantry? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly, and children will stay here during the battle, while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Van Tegan is our only defense. Please. Have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. Sir Perth needs holy protection for the knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. What do you mean? Sir Perth believes that I can protect them against these creatures. A shield only the Maker can provide, and that I withhold this power. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. But if they think it helps them... I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver-cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. You said you wanted holy protection. 
Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Mother Hannah has some holy amulets. Would those do? If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. These are maker's symbols. What better protection could we ask for? I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Is there anything else you need? No, nothing comes to mind. Carry on. As you wish, my lady. Make her watch over you. Another doomed soul come to drown their sorrows here, I see. If you came here for a drink, you'd have to talk to Lloyd. He's got a vice grip on the spigots. I'm just here to keep the boys from mutiny. So, how has business been? What business? Without the castle soldiers, the only customers we have are local. And they're all in the militia with no money to spend. The few with any money are here, but it's not enough to justify working. Lloyd's a... greasy pig. And if I didn't need this job so badly, I... I don't care for Lloyd, I take it. He gropes me and pays me next to nothing. But I suppose it could be worse. Not like I've got many options. I could talk to Lloyd about this. No, no. That'll just make things worse. And that's very sweet. But I'll be fine. Shouldn't you be at the Chantry? Later on, yes. Lloyd will lock himself in the cellar, and I'll go to the Chantry. Are you... fighting tonight? Yes, I am. That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. What do you know about that elf in the corner? Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. I should go. Keep safe. Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travellers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Not at all. Brave words. Brave words. Well, we'll see when night falls, won't we? So, what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Who are you, anyway? Name's Lloyd. Shouldn't you be helping defend the village? Why? When them creatures attack, I lock myself in the cellar, just batten the hatches and wait it out. What's the point in getting myself killed with all the rest of them? If that makes me a coward, then I'm a coward. Then be a coward, if that's what you want. Well... Yes. I suppose that is what I want. What do you know about that elf in the corner? Not much. Says his name's Berwick. Arrived here more than a week back. Waiting for his brother, he says. I've never seen him before, but he paid good for his room. Quiet sort. Why are you still open? I'm not abandoning my tavern because of a few monsters. The second I'm in the Chantry, Murdoch and his men will be here drinking all my ale. I should go. Right then. Not looking for company. Shouldn't you be with the militia? Why? I don't live here. Then what are you doing here? Just waiting until I can leave again. You said you were waiting for your brother? My what? Oh, yes. He was supposed to meet me here. And then I got stuck here when monsters from the castle attacked. You didn't try to leave? Uh, no. Those who tried are dead. And, um, I, uh, have to wait for... My brother. Look, you're very pretty and all, but I was told to... Uh, just leave me alone. I'm not going anywhere. Start talking. About what? Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. And how do you know I'm a Grey Warden? I just... Uh, overheard it, that's all. If you'll excuse me, I want to get to the Chantry before the sun goes down. This will be easier if you just tell me what you're hiding. If I... but I never... Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck, same as you, I swear. Who are they? Who hired you to do this? A tall fellow. I forget his name. He, uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man, Terran Loghain's right hand. So I didn't do anything wrong. What are you supposed to watch the castle for? 
just to report any changes, honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. So you know how this happened? Tell me now. I don't know anything about these creatures. When the Arl got sick, I got scared that people would think I was involved. But I swear I don't know anything about it. They sent me to watch. Maybe they knew the Arl would get sick. I don't know. How do I know you're telling the truth? Here. This is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it. Do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. I think you should help defend Redcliffe tonight. Fitting. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. The letter is just as he said. He was told to watch the castle and report back. Loghain's no fool. He didn't sign it, so it's not much use as evidence against him. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. We're not only ready, Murdoch. We're going to win. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk, but we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. I'd like to talk about Dwin. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. I am ready to make my stand. Let's wait for sundown. Are you sure? There's still time left if you need to talk with Sir Perth or do anything else. No, I'm ready now. Then good luck to you. You'll need it. <gasps> They're coming! Get to your positions! Make ready! from the lake! They're attacking the barricades! We need help! Knights, stay here and guard the path. Come on! We need to hurry! Yeah! 
dawn arrives and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, dear lady. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. I was happy to help defend the village. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. <laughs>